I'm in a process right now of having the... Uh, Hard to find the words, isn't it? Because you think we're going to climb your tree. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, too well. <laughs> so it, the story is I have a partner who stands firm in being aligned. And when I met him, I said, I never wanted you to be the source of my happiness. But we've gotten to the point where, for some reason, I keep wanting to make him change what he's doing for me to be happy. And I'm getting stuck in these rampages of unappreciation, which really pisses me off because I find myself just going away about the things that tick me off. And then I'll stop and say, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? And I keep getting these arguments and whatnot that I really don't want. I mean, I love him unconditionally. I compassionately. Well, that's not true. <laughs> true, I guess, yeah. Why do I keep doing that? That is the problem that you are expressing here, is that you don't love him unconditionally. You love him conditionally. Condition. Otherwise, you wouldn't need him to change conditions so that you would feel better in the moment. Why do I keep doing that? I mean, I literally grab onto stuff that pisses me off and go on a tirade. Well, here's the most important thing that we really want you to hear. And we give you these words because we want to soothe you now, but even more, we want you to use this understanding to soothe yourself when that happens. And that really is what that step five is that we're talking about, of understanding that there will always be contrast because you're always going to be fine-tuning. We know you get that. We also want to remind you that law of attraction is a very powerful thing. And whatever it is that you are offering, it might be that he pushes some hot button. It might be that it activates something that you haven't quite resolved yet. There may be beliefs that are hindering you from this delicious excursion of turning thoughts to things that you're wanting to resolve. And so he's helping to stir them up so that you can come to a place of resolving them. So many things we want to tell you all at the same time, we'll just take them one at a time. You're not going to figure it out all at once, nor do you need to. This conversation is about discovering and practicing and fostering and becoming really, really good at the mastery of alignment anyway. We like the words path of least resistance because obviously on some of these subjects, this is not a path of least resistance. This is a path of great resistance. That's okay. So think about your inner being, just for a minute. Your inner being, who knows who you are, who knows who he is, who knows what you really want, because you've created it, it's in your vortex, who knows the relationship that you want, who knows the relationship that is underway, and who knows how to get you from where you are to that and is leading you down this path over and under and around and through all of this resistance. Now, this is the part that we really want you to hear. This is where the breakthrough is about to happen for you. So it's going to feel good as it does and we're going to stay with it until it does. So it's all right. So just relax. Everybody's benefiting from this. Everybody's got some of this stuff going on too. When we talk about this path of least resistance, You've put all the resistance there, and your inner being doesn't mind that because your inner being knows what the resistance is that you've put along your path and knows how to guide you around it. So your inner being isn't saying to you, you need to clean up all this resistance. Your inner being is saying to you, you just need to follow us. We'll guide you around all of this resistance. We'll guide you around it. We'll guide you to what you want around all this resistance. You cannot live, hear this, you cannot live in this body, in this world, touched by others as you have been, as you all have been, without observing what is and forming beliefs around it. So now we're going to make the most powerful statement that we have ever made about this process of understanding. Your beliefs that you hold equal your what is. 
And within that what is, and within those beliefs, are all the resistance that's keeping you from what's becoming. Did you hear that? We want you to hear it the way we mean it. In other words, how could it be any other way? You've been living life and what is, is, and your beliefs are based about what is. We're just wanting to sort of shake you loose and help you to stop beating up on yourself on the inevitable place that you are standing. Of course you've got beliefs. And of course you've got resistance along your path. That's just a natural thing. Stop beating up on yourself about it and accept that you can get into the receptive mode and your inner being will guide you to where you want to be. For example, let's say that there are five hot buttons that through life experience and the experience of negative emotion, you have discovered that you want to stay off of them. We'll say with people in general or with your lover. Politics, religion, who you've slept with, <laughs> what you did with all that money, and how you feel about me. So let's say that these are trouble spots. Couldn't have hit them more right on. <laughs> so let's say that these are trouble spots. You really are watching, are you? <laughs> <laughs> so let's say that these are trouble spots and that you are in the receptive mode. So your inner being is giving you ideas of things that you might talk about. We're just talking about a conversation just for the fun of exploring this. So your inner being is giving you an inspiration to talk about furniture and your inner being is giving you an inspiration to talk about travel and you're getting all this inspiration. So you've discovered this really rich relationship as you avoid politics and religion and who you've slept with and what you did with that money and what you think of me. Because those are beliefs that you picked up along your physical trail and they're sort of unresolved, they're in the way, but they don't have to be active. And your inner being is guiding you. When we say guiding you down the path of least resistance, we're not saying fixing everything. We're not saying making it all go away. We're saying inspiring you to the conversation, better said, inspiring you to the activation of vibration that doesn't activate those things and put them in the way. You've lived so much life and so much of it could be in your way, but it doesn't need to be in your way. And you don't have to bomb it off the planet to get it out of your way. You cannot get to the bottom of anything. You could not have enough interventions with your partner or, or anybody to get to the bottom of any of those things to get them to go away and be non-existent. They exist. They are beliefs that do not need to be active. And your inner being will guide you through the path of least resistance over and under and around and through. And you can live happily ever after without being identical twins and identical thinkers on every identical thought in the world. You're not ever, ever going to find another who is just like you. So we want this conversation to, first of all, put you all at ease with the beliefs that you have. It doesn't matter that you have beliefs. Stop defending them, stop comparing them with the beliefs of everybody else, and just let your inner being guide you moment by moment to the conversation that is the most harmonious that you could find in the moment. Do you ever move through life experience and find that the things that you were inspired to say? Esther used to watch Barry. It was so intriguing to her that as they would have dinner with different friends as they moved through time in the 30 something years that they were together. Esther would notice that when they were with these people, these stories would be activated within Jerry. And when they were with these people, these stories would be activated within Jerry. And when they were with these people, these stories would be activated. And she always wondered, why is it that those are the stories that you want to tell with this person? And these are the stories that you want to tell with this person. And it was because he was tuned in to source and receiving inspiration because he was a consummate teacher, always wanting to uplift and always wanting to interject into any conversation the thing that would be of the most value to whoever he was with. And because he was so often in the receptive mode, the ideas that would occur to him Esther wondered, this story is a lot more funny. Why don't you always tell this story? And this story, I don't really ever like it very much. And so if you never told that story again, it would be all right with me, she would say to him. You know, I know that you like to tell that story, but it would be all right with me if you never tell that story again. 
But the reason that he was inspired to tell that story is because there was something in it that was a benefit for the person that he was telling it to. How did... So, yes. How did Esther not give a rip about what he was doing? Because that's... When because she decided to love him. She was not about to let herself not love him. There was never going to be anything that he could ever do that was going to be big enough that was going to cause her to not love him. And so he told stupid stories. <laughs> so that's really what we're talking about. It's about just getting your priorities straight, so to speak, and caring so much about how you feel and about being tapped into the love that is truly you. That's everything that we heard from you. You just want that tuned in, tapped in love to radiate through you and to your partner. That's what you want, you see. And what's tripping you up is that sometimes, so this is really what we want to say, and then we'll take a segment of refreshment. You're going to like this, and we so want you to hear it, and you're going to like this, and we so want you to hear this, and you're going to like this, and we so want you to hear this. Once it starts tipping and going kind of wonky, don't try to fix it. Just let it go wonky. Because law of attraction is just going to have its way with you. And once something's activated and it's underway, just try to go to bed as soon as you can. Just, just try to stop the cycle and do all of your work in advance. Let the work you do be when you're not upset. What you're wanting to do is just practice the thought of how much you love this person when it's easy to do. And don't try to practice the thought of loving this person when he's telling a story that is driving you out of your mind. In other words, that's not the time to do it. Don't try to fix it when law of attraction has it all twirling away and a sort of out of control thing. Just do what you can to get through it, and then do the work in advance. We'll talk about that more when we come back from the segment of refreshment, because it really is practice the receptive mode when it's easy. 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 And pretty soon you'll get tuned to the receptive mode. You'll get tuned to it. So loving someone is so easy to do that it doesn't matter what they do because loving them is so easy to do that it doesn't matter what they do because loving someone is so easy to do because you practiced it when it was easy to do. But when you try to practice when it's hard to do, you don't make it. And then you call yourself a failure, and then you feel like there's something wrong with you, and, and there isn't. It's just law of attraction, doing the thing that law of attraction does. 